going through this book is just like going back in time. I don't think we can talk about Silchester and and not talk about Grenfell because it would most likely have been demolished had Grenfell Tower not, not burnt that night. We were fighting for our homes and we're still in our homes. That's not worth 72 souls but that's how it's that's how it's happened it's strange and I think our experience is that we always have to you know watch our watch our backs really for people who want to develop the land we live on to a higher density than that at which we live in it Unlike many who lost friends or family in the devastating fire at Grenfell Tower on the 14th of June 2017, I didn't lose anyone that I knew, as the only person I knew managed to escape. But I felt the loss of each and every one of those 72 men, women and children. Every name published, every photo displayed was like a deep stab at my heart from a sharp knife. I didn't see the fire from the beginning. I only saw it several hours later, as the sun was about to rise. But I heard everything. I heard the helicopters, the fire engines, the police sirens, the shouting, screaming, the commotion, the lot. Only they were all part of my dream. Normally, I'm a very light sleeper. The slightest noise wakes me up and there has been many times when I have got out of bed and looked out of the window to see what's going on. But that night I was in deep sleep, dreaming. And this was my dream. I had just come out of a building complex, ready to go home, but realized that my son was still in the building. So I go back into the building only to find everything that was there before when I first went was completely different. The rooms were different, the doors and corridors were different, it was altogether a different place. And I'm walking around from room to room calling out for my son. And there are many people in the corridors, all walking around, running around, calling out to each other, shouting and arguing. Then suddenly there are cars and trucks coming into the corridors and there are men with diggers digging holes in front of some of the doors. I feel completely lost and totally confused amidst all the noisy chaos. Yet still walking around, opening every door, looking in every room to find my son. Until I suddenly hear his voice, Mom, Mom, calling me and I woke up. It was about 4.30 a.m. and as I opened my eyes, I saw him standing by the door with an uncharacteristic look on his face that I did not at first recognize. He beckoned to the window with his hand. I thought he was showing me the glorious sunrise, as he knows I love taking photos of it. But I then identified that look. It was a look of disbelief and terror. He didn't utter a word, just beckoned to the window with his hand. I sat up in my bed and looked out. For a second I couldn't believe what I was seeing. What? And I jumped out of bed, totally shaken shaken to the bones. I was deep asleep, dreaming while all that was going on, just about a hundred meters away from me. I was dreaming, but I woke up to a nightmare. Although we were the um, center of attention just a couple of years prior to what happened because of the regeneration and all the trauma that residents were going through because of the nature of that um, regeneration, the way they were trying to achieve it. Most everyone within the estate not only witnessed what happened, they most, a lot of people lost friends and family. And they were also traumatized even further but they were not getting any support from anyone and people um, were not um, being accepted 
uh, in the places where they, they were sort of providing the support. Anyway, we thought that we need to do something about that. So one of the things that we did was to try and do some kind of um, art therapy. So we started this art workshop with the help of Constantine. Like most people in the area have had a, been profoundly affected by the Grenfell Tower fire in 2017. Um, and I was almost wanting to run away from the area, unlike many people who wanted to come down and intervene and to help out, because I was so closely connected to the, the tower, knew some of the residents then actually worked in the tower as an artist before the fire. So it was a tremendous privilege to come back and think about a project to run. And as with all arts projects, it's a real, really beneficial thing to have a durational quality to that. And so we mapped out a project that eventually took two plus years. Often what I do is just bring down a blank piece of paper and to encourage people to make a little mark and then to build from that. So these amazing drawings that we made over the course of a, a year or so just started off, often with Nahid as the first person creating a little drawing in the corner a little landscape drawing and then we would then perhaps I might add in a tower block and then some of the other residents would come in and they would add in things and we would then create this unified amazing composition. When you dance, you look silly. <laughs> you know? So, you know, the dance is your past. You know, you used to be younger. You know, if the melody is good, you have to tell the story what it's all about. Do you know any um, Hank Williams songs? You know, you you you, you picture me when I was playing the music here. Yeah. You know. This is what I wrote called sunset. It is another sunset when they come to an end. One of the meaning in life that it never ends. Remember the days, remember the years. Something that passed by and fill you up with tears. Some can be sad and some can be joy. Simple in life since I was a boy. Maybe tomorrow will bring more happiness. No more regrets, no more sorrow. We don't know what's coming next. After the sunset, 
wait until tomorrow. It's a glorious afternoon and we're on Wainfleet Square. There are children playing and um, it's, it's a very good place to be. Uh, these trees, as we've always said, are marvellous and the mature trees bear witness to a, to a mature community, um, which is what we said in our defence, I suppose, when we were threatened with the wrecking ball and it still still holds true now. Um, you asked me to read um, a thing I wrote quite sort of um, quickly and without a lot of thought. Um, I don't think it's got a title. Four Towers, possibly. Four Towers dance a quadrille fair bowing to the corners of Wainfleet Square. The trees and grass and shrubs and birds, cans and wrappers and flowers and turds, have all heard stories of the lives of those whose windows look on where the shadows lengthen. As the evening rears, the darkness shrouds, the moon appears. Who stays up to watch the spaces where once they walked and still leave traces? This is the darkest shift of the night, where only the ghost walks there, over the rooftops. Four square in view, the sunrise crowns the mighty ghost, the one wrapped tower that dances no longer. And even though, remember at the beginning when we came, we felt a bit shy and a bit nervous about drawing. When we saw, what well, I did anyway, when I saw, you know, the finished, the finished production of your work, we kind of thought, oh wow, I can draw. I can actually make a few things. Shining. Often what I do is just bring down a blank piece of paper and to encourage people to make a little mark and then to build from that. So these amazing drawings that we made over the course of a, a year or so just started off often with Nahid as the first person creating a little drawing in the corner, a little landscape drawing. And then we would then, perhaps I might add in a tower block and then some of the other residents would come in and they would add in things and we would then create this unified, amazing composition. Um, alongside the drawing, I also wanted to work with clay. I really love clay and I thought this would be a really good thing for residents to get to grips with literally it's a wonderful tactile thing and many of the residents have never used clay before and I think they actually made some real deep connections with soil and the land and created little shapes vessels tower blocks um, so we created a lot of work it was amazing we also took part in street festivals the iftar street festival um, and I think we had probably over 400 500 people take part in the project and the last phase of the project was creative writing and bookmaking. Um, and that was at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. And it was really great to get them to put words to some of the images and thoughts and feelings that they were expressing as a result of making art. We really didn't want the art to be explicitly about Grenfell, but for some of the residents, it, that was a natural thing for them to want to express. Um, so yes, we're making this film to showcase the book that we've just printed and it's in the great book, The Art for Seal, just the books. And as I look through it again, it's hot off the press, it's just bringing back wonderful memories of the time I shared with residents on and around Silchester Estate in some of the amazing words and images that they put together.
There was a resident who came in and um, she said that she'd never touched clay but she said she would try and she produced this amazing sculpture which is a, a woman sitting with um, um, her heart, basically her heart on her lap. It's very dark but there is a little um, like a rucksack on her back and inside that there is a, the moon there's a sun and there's the, um, some stars, what looked like some stars. So when I looked at that, I was so amazed that I wrote a piece of poetry just to relate to this. She looked alone, isolated and drowned in deep sorrow. Wearing her heart on, on her lap, she sat in solitude. To onlookers, she was lonely, deserted, and this more. But no one noticed she carried a whole universe of optimism in a nebulous backpack on her back. Embracing the sun, the moon, and the whole galaxy along a black hole. The paradox that is inherent in human nature. Sadness, joy, trouble, peace, anguish, hope, frailty, and resilience. Resilience that lets you rise after every fall. I'm a resident from the Whitstable House and uh, I'm an artist. This is the picture that we did as a community um, when we all come together to sh just to share our uh, thoughts or images or visions. For me, when I drew this uh, pitch, uh, the picture of this um, balcony that have I always seen like this everyday life you know, always the same day and same routine. But until that night, you notice that uh, thinking that something has changed. And then the day feels like it's just dimmed down and then feels like your mind clouding. But having to keep a positive thought that we all gather together as a community. When I went to the art workshop, I found it really fun and it was a really great way to get my emotions out and chill like 
on a Sunday afternoon and it was really fun. So I made loads of different things out of clay and I stuck them on little boards and I used bright colours. Um, it was really fun making it all and every Sunday I would just be like, is it today? Can I do it today? So yeah. Yeah. I live in Bramley House and in after the fire our community suffer a lot and one thing I love about nothing there it's what happened to bring people together the community together and art of Silchester was one of the unique thing and it, it did a lot for this community and I really like it and now when I'm looking back it's just bringing people together on the same table doing the artwork I think that was very interesting for me and for my family and yeah this was unique thank you we love living here in W10 W11 and it's a great it's a great community spirit. We do lots of things together. I mean, it was great. I mean, it was a sad time, obviously, the Grenfell um, Tower fire. But like we said in the book, you know, being part of the community and do it, being involved in the, the project was, was a fantastic time. It was, a, it was, it was like, almost like a healing process for a lot of people and like we said in the book you know it brought so many people together young people old people various people there were so many people that were there that I see every day but I didn't actually know lived in my block or lived you know within minutes to where I live so that was great just to make new friends gain new friendships so we really enjoyed that my name is Elia and this may be pronounced in various ways but it means ascending high up or growing. Aaliyah loves flowers. Whenever she draws, there are always flowers which represent new life and new growth. Through tragedy, we, we have come, come together and are united. united. The young, young and the old producing such magical artwork. I think it's the best therapy that you can get. If you just show how you feel by putting it on paper. You, if you can't describe it in words, maybe you could describe it in images, and that's what people did. And we draw and paint and play with clay. We sing and dance to tell our story. Let the new chapter unfold. We love the Sinchester estate.